Aloha. It's June the 9th, 2022. It's Wednesday. Excuse me. It's Thursday. Thursday, it's 11 o'clock, and it's time for American Issues Take Two. I'm Tim Apicello filling in for Jay Fidel, who's on assignment. And with us today is our very special, special Stephanie Dahl. Uh, sorry, Stephanie. <laughs> Help me out. <laughs> At the bookstore, remember? The old That's bookstore. right. <laughs> And they used to rob the banks. <laughs> yes. And, and so today's title, believe it or not, is uh, Fox viewers won't watch January 6th hearings. Uh, we're in about an hour and a half, two hours, we are going to see the first opening, if you will, for the Select Committee January 6th hearings. And it is going to be televised on all the major stations. Uh, I don't know who's not going to air it except for one company, one media company. They allegedly go by the name of Fox News. But we all know that news channels do exactly that. They report on the news. They report things on, that are important to, to the society, to politics, to business, uh, even weather. They report on it, but not Fox News. Fox News is not going to air these select committee hearings. Gee, what a surprise. Stephanie, welcome. What's your take on this? What's your take that Fox News has blocked the January 6th Select Committee hearing. Thank you, Tim, and hello. I appreciate uh, the question. Uh, it has been one, because I've been thinking about it. And, uh, be, and, and one reason is the disappointment of that to find out that a major today station uh, actually is not running this topic when it's a historical event that is going to be listed uh, always going forward and in textbooks, and I'm I'm a little bit disappointed, but I think it also va validates the different approach to all of this information uh, uh, that that Fox doesn't purport to do. In other words, there's nothing about their work that tries to unify or develop any consensual approach or just getting everybody on the same page. They're not doing that. And I believe that um, that is one of the reasons we're so fractionated, fra fractionalized. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's where we are. And I find it very difficult. And I think it, it even just really hurts because it contributes to the demolition of our demo democracy. Well, I guess I keep, you know, I keep referring to Fox News as Fox Entertainment or Fox Commentary. And I don't care, if, you know, it's fine if you're Fox commentary, but I think it's problematic that they keep labeling themselves as Fox News and basically pulling the wool over the viewer's eyes and reporting it as news, which it's not. And this is a classic example where this particular topic doesn't fit well with their politicized agenda. And, you know, it's not the first thing they haven't televised. I don't think they televised a lot of the impeachment hearings. Um, if they did, they did so very sparsely, reported, covered it. Uh, I'm not sure to what extent they went with the State of the Union um, addresses that we've had before with Joe Biden. So, I mean, what, what are we to say about a, a, a news station, quote unquote news, that refuses to cover the news? And, and, are the, and the second part of this question is, is that are the Democrats are they, are they missing the opportunity to seize on this moment and point out that Fox News is running away scared uh, from this topic? Uh, I think that you've got a really good point, Tim, that, that they're ignoring an opportunity. And I think that um, making sure that uh, the people who are going to report on Fox News, who will be called in, to talk about the, sh the showing of this topic, because I have heard some say, well, I am going to be on Fox News talking about this presentation. But um, CNN and the others that MSNBC and elsewhere ought to be making that point harder so that people will know it, it will be shown. But on the other hand, it, it's deplorable that they're not showing it. And to tell you the truth, I can't remember exactly who 
if all of these other uh, events have been televised by Fox News, because I have such a difficulty staying on the program, which I know our colleague Jay has also mentioned. I leave after a while because it's well, all He hard says, I, I, I can only watch until I hear the first lie. And he says, I never get into a minute and a half of Fox News because it doesn't take long for them to start. <laughs> Something happens, so it's never an unadulterated, just run it like they're going to run it. And, and that's okay if they don't want to do that. Fine. Run it and then do the criticism every inch, you know, mm -hmm. after every five minutes, go in and lambast it. That would be a more uh, informational news approach, media a responsibility, but they're not even doing that. So I, I do agree that, you know, it, and I think that nationally it has been addressed. It has been labeled as more of an entertainment show. Uh, there are more con conclusions being drawn that's more an entertainment or it's not it's not up to the standards of of the media industry as to be a an informational and a news mm -hmm. you know i had chuck uh, crumpton on yesterday yesterday's show and he said it really doesn't matter what they cover what they don't cover it's all about control of the narrative and and to control the narrative certainly you don't want to hear anything contrary to your narrative and i suspect at one o'clock this afternoon in hawaii time we're going to start hearing things contrary to the GOP narrative. Um, if you're, you know, if you're a senior producer at Fox News, uh, what do you think went into the decision-making process not to air uh, a, a huge national event, the hearing? I think it's just as you say. They've managed to convey the notion that this was an, a nothing, and that it didn't, it didn't uh, present near and present danger to anybody there or to the nation as a whole or to our, our political beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a real problem because they have succeeded in that. And by not running it, um, they are only going to be uh, continuing to, to make sure that they support that stance, that understanding, that belief. My friends that go traveling in other places and come back, um, from red states where you know they're in homes or around uh, places where their television's running, and they're always running on Fox News. Mm -hmm. And so, in order to do that, I don't think it's just the political topics that that have to be on. It's uh, it has to have that entertainment side of it. So, in other words, I see that's one of the differences too, because it's more fun to watch Fox News. They do more things. Well, Fox does appeal to a cultural um, leaning, if you will. And uh, the bottom line is with that leaning uh, becomes viewership. They do well with it. I also think that um, there are those who, as you just mentioned, who are Please, dedicated who are dedicated to Fox 100% of the day, of, of day and night watching. I mean, that's what they do. Uh, so there's both a cultural uh, attraction also the political leanings of Fox, and that's why it's on 24-7 in their households. Uh, do you think any of them will escape the gravity of Fox and, and dare turn into uh, a CNN or a PBS or an ABC uh, network to watch these hearings, or are they going to be satisfied not to know anything, and that helps them confirm what they want to believe? I think they're satisfied with it, Tim, unfortunately, and I think that, the, that there's a, a a cooperation here of Fox trying to find what this base that Trump is, uh, you know, conjured up. They want to make sure they keep it happy. So I think that that they're purveying what their research tells them these people want, and that's what they get. So so that's why they've had the loss. I think of. Okay, we might be slow feed here on your video, so I'm going to kind of. Uh, kick in yeah, here, and we keep losing you a little bit, uh, Stephanie. Oh, really? Your um, yeah, your your video feed's getting a little frozen here and there. So let me go to the next question because I really didn't hear your answer on that last one. Okay. But um, you know, we had Chris Wallace and Shepard Smith. They seem to be the last two journalists on Fox. They they have vacated. They've left the building. And can you think of anyone that fills their shoes? I mean, are there any? Are there any journalists left at Fox uh, that are notable and do their job as a journalist ought to? Uh, I, I always liked Geraldo Rivera uh, when he had started watching him so long ago, because peeking through 
Geraldo Rivera's comments are, are sometimes some rather more progressive attitudes that he once actually presented. But I think uh, the others, um, unfortunately, have gone. One was another person. He had been on NPR radio and went to Fox, and he stayed there a long, long time trying to, to pu push through, punch through, and yeah. keep them balanced in it. But now he's gone, uh, and then there are Mike Wallace's in that level. Those people are gone. Um, and Bill O'Reilly, sadly, you know, he he left, um, but he, he he was a little bit of a balance to some of the others that they had there. He he was a little more moderate, it seems. I, I haven't done any study of this. I'm just these are just impressions that I've had. But no, I agree with you. I think that it's been left to its own devices, which is they've succeeded in uh, pre, in pre, you know pre, preferring to address the the desires, the, the uh, preferences of the people that are in the Trump base. And, and remember who those people are. Mm -hmm. They're not sophisticated and they're not, you know, an analysts and people that, that want to understand the nuances of the news. They're the people that want to have a little fun while doing that too. Yeah. You know, something just came to mind when you were speaking, and that is, remember some of these texts to um, Trump administration, particularly the chief of staff, uh, Mark Meadows, and some of those texts came from Fox personnel, Fox uh, news hosts. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that might be a motivation that's a little too close to home? And that could be a potential motivation why they don't want to air this to, to see their correspondents, or they're not correspondents, their uh, talking heads uh, involved in the hearings, their, their names specifically. Well, I think they're they're already named, they're out there in the news and hopefully, um, and I guess they're, no, I think that they are just going along with their general outline of making so sure- So nothing, nothing special, it's just, you know, business as usual. If it's yeah. anti-Trump or anti, uh, anything that would make the GOP look bad, then don't cover it. Pretend it never happened and talk about Benghazi. Exactly. <laughs> Doing the Benghazi again, which got nowhere. Um, I, that that's to me, it's hysterical. It's not funny at all. But the fact that Hillary Clinton had to go through such a such an an investigation when these people aren't even willing to show the actual tape of things that we have. But um, I well, think she went through sixteen hours of uh, interrogation, if you will. I like that term. Sixteen hours that. where half Mark Meadows and half the staff won't even show up for a, a subpoena. Um, I think, uh, and the leader of that investigation or interrogation of Hillary Clinton had promised at such a high level to be um, able to un to reveal the true facts in that uh, in that tragedy, and mm -hmm. they, they got nothing out of it. And and Hillary Clinton sat there through all of those sixteen hours and talked and talked yeah. coherently. So <laughs> it it truly, you know, at one level was hysterical has a hysterical, but actually a tremendous flop. And, and he's still credited with that being a success. I, I, I've heard, you know, they, they claim, there's a claim given to him for that interrogation. To him. Right, and, right. And yet it yielded not one iota of information beyond what- Well, it, it revealed it was a tragedy and it was, you know, a circumstance, you know, of events that took place that were badly timed and maybe some de bad decisions were made and it did cause the lives of, of Americans. Um, but, you know, after, after 18 months of investigation and then the talking about it for another 24 months, uh, you know, you know, I guess enough's enough, but I, I don't fault Fox for doing it. I fault Fox for saying they're a news station. And I guess, you know, I, I, you know, I've said this about a 40 times on one show or another saying, let's get back to the days where the news desk was the news desk and then the commentary editorial desk was just that editorial and commentary and have, have located literally at two separate desks and um, not confuse viewers that your, your opinion now is the news or mm -hmm. it's factual news. Right. And we got to get back to those days and I don't know how we do it. That's totally devoted to the care and feeding of the base. And uh, that is the desperate situation of, of that, that kind of t media production. And that's a big step along our way to losing the democracy.
so that's what is so worrisome is that they are supported and uh, reinforced for understanding things at the level that they already do, because that's what Fox is trying to find. What is it that will keep that audience intact and keep them on their, their base of ideas that, that satisfy them to be behind the candidate, the Republican agenda? Right. It's, it's really, really frightening. And you know, so it just shows you how far along, I believe it's an indicator of how far along we already are out of um, the democracy. And, and it, uh, the other thing that, it, that it's doing is it's taking advantage of people that have never been around for the, the major uh, uh, challenges that the U.S., the major global challenges that the U.S. has faced and, and participated in and solved to the, to the benefit of the whole world. And none of these people were alive. Many of these people weren't alive during all, mm -hmm. you know, the World War II thing, the, the 30s, the Depression, and, and even more recently, you know, the, the Viet, they were here for the Vietnam stuff, but they missed that. Even they're, they're mentioning now that they've missed also the 70s and the inflation experience that we had there. So they don't have this background of experience at all that Fox needs to be bothered about. They, they, they can fill them up because they're kind of like, a, I guess, a blank slate that uh, comes from the experiences that they've had since they've been in the country. So they probably cannot even imagine what will happen to them if this democracy starts to really disintegrate. Then where do they think, where are they gonna get their social security check? Because that's the first thing these corrupt people are gonna go cash. I mean, that's gonna be over. And so all of their choices of their rights, this is what I wish Hollywood would do something about. Because remember, we've got that wonderful movie, Don't Look Up, when the asteroid right. is coming. <laughs> so what about, what is it gonna be like without democracy? Has anybody thought about, where's that program? Where's that documentary? This is what it's going to be like. You want rights? Are you kidding me? Well, sometimes people want something they don't realize what it's going to be like. Um, you know, I mean, let's, let's face it. Democracy is taking a hit in this country because uh, we're a gridlock in Congress. The Senate is one big gridlock. So nothing's passing. Nothing's getting done. And, you know, then you're, you're right for criticism from both sides that, uh, gee, democracy doesn't seem to work because nothing gets done and, and, and the country falls apart. At least a strong man like Donald Trump, he knows how to get things done, which he didn't. He really never got that much accomplished. But you know, it's the perception that Donald Trump was doing things. He was a businessman and he knew how to get things done. Well, baloney. So well, that's what, yeah. And that's why the dictator, the king, is such a satisfactory default. And it still is the default. Obviously, even with the success of this American democracy over 200 years, um, if we can call it that, but since it's the only one there is that's done what it has done, I would say it's pretty successful. But they don't, um, they don't understand what, what that means to, to have that and, and that it can go away and that they will be left with, with what were the options. The options over the 10,000 years have been dictators and pharaohs and kings. Is, yeah. And that's the default. And that's what they're doing with Trump. And I, I, I really believe that. And, uh, you know, people um, have a tendency towards that because we haven't been out of all of that for very long. We've been more in that way of governing and trying to make it better yeah. and better. You know, 240 years isn't that long as far as the spectrum of time and governance mm -hmm. of countries. You're, good point. Very yeah. good point. So, so and, yeah, and without education, okay, yeah. without getting around to think, hearing about Hammurabi, you know, uh, thousands of years ago and how that was real good, but he was also like a pharaoh or a king. So what yeah. does that mean? So nobody's, so many, many people are not in touch with history, as you know, and I think that, 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 that the beleaguered uh, historians come on and talk about that a lot, that people They do, know. and, and ought, they ought to, um, you know, I've, We've said this, you and I've said this on multiple programs in the past. I mean, where did Civics 101 go? Yeah. It just left. And most of these students today don't even have a clue on how their local city government, state government, federal government, uh, they don't have a clue on, the, on how it's compromised or compromised, comprised. And um, the bottom line is they ought to, they really should. So, mm -hmm. hey, do you think there's anything out of the um, hearing that we're gonna hear right out of the gate that's something new and something uh, 
earth shattering or is it going to be something we've been hearing all along in the dribs and drabs and nothing really new until far later into uh, other hearing dates? Okay, I, I'm going to assume that you're not paused to um, contemplate what's going on here. So I'm going to just continue <laughs> with this line of questioning and you may or may not be able to answer. Um, the question was, are, are people going to carry on? I mean, they're going to, you know, are they going to hear anything new during these hearings? And I guess the question has been posed, but now will they come up with something new? And I think people are looking for not the same Proud Boys, you know, imply implication. They're not looking for the Oath Keepers. They know those guys have been charged with sedition. They've pled guilty to sedition. I think people are wondering if how high this goes up the ladder. Does this go up to uh, the, the, the Gomerts or, you know, those politicians in Congress that maybe have aided uh, this whole process? Do you think that's what they might see in this hearing, uh, either today or, or days following? Well, Tim, I think that is a, a very value, valuable goal. I think we really, it's, it's ne needed. I mean, it needs to show how these foot soldiers who, who are the, um, you know, the white supremacists and the Proud Boys and all of these are the foot soldiers for right. what is this coup? And so when is it that... Um, we're going to get up out of that. So much of the investigation, yes, hasn't it mostly been targeting these hundreds and hundreds of people who are these, quote, foot soldiers, unquote. But now we got to move it on up to understand the roles of Roger Stone and when uh, people like that. Do you think that's probably the motivation for people to tune in? They want to see how, who, who gets uh, implicated in all this and how high this thing goes up, similar to Watergate? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to just take a stab that you're frozen again on video. So I'm going to answer for you. <laughs> please do. I don't know why I'm frozen. I'll be working on it here. All right. So look, go ahead. And I don't know if you heard that question. Uh, okay, is that I the think... motivation for people to tune in to see how high this goes up as, as Watergate was, uh, watched by a lot of people, I'm, myself as, as one of them. Well, don't you think that, uh, people want to defend, uh, Certainly, Trump. I, 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 they're on the on the line for that. They don't want anything negative to come and spoil their icon. So yes, I think they come would want to see it for those reasons. Uh -huh. Rather, yeah, because they assume already that he's not culpable, and so they want to make sure that that case is still made and that the courts can still be accused of just being political in in their attempts to do anything with him. So it's as, you're laying, as they're laying out the case for this hearing, um, I mean, they probably know that if you're one of the 33% that are GOP, there's no reaching you on a message. There's no facts that will change your opinion. There's no testimony that will make you think twice about uh, the fact that, uh, the, the, you know, stop the steal and um, Donald Trump was robbed of his victory for president of the United States for a second term. So they probably know that that audience is lost. Who do you think they're crafting the message for? Is it independence or to re-energize Democrats or, or a combination of, of, of both? I don't know. Well, I, I've been um, hearing that the assumption is that all of this is about doing it the next time, okay? So that what, where they are now is that they've got all the pieces that they need to know how to work. And they are working almost all of these pieces. Like you said, the long, their long-term goal, they've been in it for the long run. Well, you know, they're, they're, do, they're in the long run for being able to have this coup be successful next time, i.e. if Trump wins, uh, if Trump, Trump want, runs and doesn't win, then they will have all the pieces in place where they can actually turn it over and take a hold of the electoral college. And, um, and so that, that means that a lot of, including Lynn Cheney, doesn't seem to be in favor of doing anything about the electoral college or about a law that would keep a single po uh, political office 
influential in overturning an election election so that you know when he got down to it if you got 28 states versus one last state mm -hmm. that, that one that one person uh could influence it um by a vote so that's what's pretty scary here is that it's beyond kind of the basic questions of interest and knowledge it's what is what are the tactics and are they yet success are they successful enough to have control of this and uh right Hey, yeah. you mentioned Liz Cheney. Um, you know, she's already announced that she certainly will not run for uh, president of the United States in 2024, that she's interested in, you know, retaining her Senate seat in Wyoming. How does she come out of all of this, this hearing and her, her really admirable um, position to defend democracy, if you will, to defend the republic? Uh, but how does she come out of all this with her, her constituents? Well, I think uh, I certainly respect her for this effort, and I laud her for trying to point out uh, where what what it really means and get the evidence to support that meaning and make it accessible to everybody. Um, but I've been I've just been so disappointed in what the news is saying are her numbers in Wyoming. It doesn't look like she's gonna be elected again because Trump's had a rally out there and uh, the, the, they're, they're like, she's like 50 points behind, I mean, a, a large number of points behind her challenger. Now on the other side of things, she has a huge war chest. So she's got lots of money to deploy towards winning this election but I, I i don't know if she started to do that yet or not but it'll be interesting to see what she does because at this point right now from what i've heard recently on the news she's not going to win and that would be a big blow to those of us who respected her courage and um, her integrity mm -hmm. on this matter you know we're, we're out of time and so before i ask you for your last words and your last opinion um how do you think this is going to go? How do you think viewership is going to be on this hearing? Are you, do you think it's going to be um, a success as far as viewership, or is it a nothing burger? That's a really good question, Tim. That is because are people going to be uh, looking for the upward bound nature of this investigation and where it's going to go, and if they're going to actually find out who took it on as in the leadership? or are they gonna be turned off because we're gonna see the same thing we saw at the beginning of the January one committee. So mm -hmm. I, I venture a guess that they've, they're smart enough. I mean, the people on that committee uh, hopefully know how to do this and or have been uh, supported to understand how you do this kind of a presentation for success with an audience. Uh, hopefully they've had that and uh, and we'll all be there uh, really uh, seeing the roof, what did, what did uh, the, mm -hmm. the 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 senator say blow, blow the roof off the top right you know i i have one more question to me i can't help myself i asked this to chuck crumpton yesterday did the republicans make a mistake by not agreeing to do a commission a bipartisan commission and remember commissions you tend not to leak anything out i mean you you really keep a lid on all information you've gathered all testimony all taxes all all evidence really nothing is leaked at all uh, did they make a mistake not going that route versus um, forcing the hand of the House to do this select committee hearing? Yeah, I think Tim, that's such a good, good question and good point because there's the matter of how much choice did they have? I, I mean, I, I think that I'm sensing that it's fortunate that they're able to do what they've got. And now it's all being criticized as political because they only have two Republicans on it. But what choice did they have? Right. It was all stopped up before. So well, I'm I, talking about the the GOP not not thinking it was a wiser decision to buy off on a, a commission oh, where you won't have the the dribs and drabs of of leaking all this horrible information for the last 17 months. And um, I'm not sure if that served the GOP well, or or maybe it did. That's I think that's a really good point. Uh, and I think that uh, they they were trying to it's another reveal that they want mm -hmm. to control the story. They want to control the information. So I think it maybe addresses that, that uh, they wouldn't they would want the least uh, in, in informative procedure in place that they could manage. And so um, that's that's what they've got. And I think that's what they want.
They don't want Alrighty. this information out. They, we would never heard another thing about it. If yeah, we, we had wouldn't have. Yeah, commitment. good point. Yeah. Alrighty, uh, we we are we've run over time, but I, I'd like to get your last thoughts about this hearing. And what do you think? I'm excited that it is going to happen. I'm grateful for their work. And I think it's more about our education and how this democracy is supposed to work and how we can make it work better. And that will continue to be an outcome as we go forward as to how the other side responds to it. And that maybe uh, there'll be some understanding that our representation in our governing bodies is, is not sufficient to hold back um, this kind of thing coming over us again. Uh, but anyhow, we'll learn a lot from it. And I appreciate that work and that our representatives finally feel like we're getting something out of the Congress. <laughs> and next is gone. <laughs> good, good point. Yeah. All righty. Well, I'd like to thank um, Stephanie Stoll Dalton for uh, her, her, her sage comments, <laughs> although they are frozen at times. I'm um, so sorry. <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Stephanie, for joining us. Uh, I'm Tim Apicella. This is American Issues Take Two. Please join us next Thursday at 11 o'clock, and we will hope to see you then. Until then, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.